Hello and welcome, ladies and gentlemen. I am sick again, and therefore it is time for Game Design 101 Part 3, Core Gameplay Systems and Subsystems. The review, a reminder that a game designer is someone that can translate real and fictional experiences into gameplay, and, very importantly, predict the value of those gameplay experiences. What's a gameplay system? It is the realization of transforming real or fictional activities into gameplay. And last time in lesson two, we learned about a gameplay mechanic, which is a component of a gameplay system, my definition, not necessarily everyone's, and mechanics of tension that force the player to make difficult decisions, and mechanics of reinforcement, mechanic or system that gives benefits to other mechanics or system. Core system design. How do I know it's a core system? Well, you can tell if it's a core system if it is relevant to the genre that you are making, the topic of the game, or the core gameplay loop. We'll talk about the core gameplay loop in more detail later. Let us do a little analysis and I'll help you kind of see how the thinking goes. Is it a core system or a subsystem? Meaning is it the core gameplay or is it supportive of the core gameplay or attention mechanic of the core gameplay? First, we'll start with the genre. <clears throat> what are the genres? We'll just do the basic ones. Action, adventure, role-playing, shooter, simulation, strategy. We'll go through each one. Don't worry. And remember that last time we learned the common systems. Combat, navigation, experience, and leveling. Basically improving your character. Camera, economic, points and scoring, conversation. As you can imagine, some of these are in every game, but are not necessarily part of the core gameplay. Let's start with an action game. Remember, here is our cheat sheet. Is it relevant to the genre, topic, and primary gameplay? In an action game, here are some of the common systems. There's often combat, almost always, navigation, experience and leveling, more common these days than it has been in the past. The camera system, sometimes relevant, sometimes not if it's a 2D platform, and the points and scoring system, which some games don't have them at all. So which ones of these do you think would be the core system? If you said combat, yeah, you're, 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 you're probably right. Now it's not true for every game. There are action games, like Thomas Was Alone, where uh, where the navigation might be more of the core uh, core gameplay system. But for most action games, it's going to be combat. <clears throat> adventure games. Now, just as a reminder, adventure games are games where you go around and sort of experience the world and maybe you talk to other characters and things like that or solve puzzles. So for those games, generally speaking, there's navigation, a point score system, and conversation system. Which of these do you think would be the core system of an adventure game? It really does depend on the adventure game, but in general, it's navigation because it's the exploration that matters the most. But you could also argue that the conversation system for certain adventure games is the most important one because that's how all of the problems in the game are solved. And so you might have two core systems for an adventure game. Role play. Which ones of these do you think would be the core system for a role playing game? Uh, now, there's going to be a lot of contention here because you could definitely make an argument for several of these. But in general, it's going to be these three, combat, navigation, and experience and leveling. For most role-playing games, combat is the main thing you do to gain experiences, experience and levels, which allows you to be, become better at combat. And navigation, generally in a role-playing game, you're going around and, and so forth. And you could even argue conversation systems in many role-playing games is super important because that's how most of the gameplay is played out in the story. All four of these could be considered core to the role-playing game. And in many role-playing games, all four of these are core gameplay systems. Shooters. This should be easy. <laughs> Combat, navigation, and camera. There, you could you could argue that the resource management is super important in some shooters, but generally those would be considered a survival game by modern standards. So we're just thinking about core shooters. What do you think? I mean, everyone should get this one. It's combat. Of course it's combat. You're shooting people, and that's the, the, the whole point. Simulation. Now this one's going to be difficult simply because there are so many types of simulation games. Think of your favorite simulation game and uh, think about what the core system would be for that. If you said combat, then you're probably a fan of uh, Total War because that, that would definitely be true. However, if you said uh, economic, then you're probably a fan of SimCity because the economics of that game are the core gameplay. And if you said navigation, then you might be a fan of, say, Microsoft Flight Sim or other flight sims. 
because you would be absolutely right. The navigation would probably be the core gameplay. Strategy games. We got combat, navigation, economics, point score. In some strategy games, navigation is not important. Um, but I think you can imagine what the answer is here. That's right. Combat would obviously be the whole point of most strategy games revolves around combat. You're trying to out-strategize your opponent in order to defeat them. Especially at, say, a real-time strategy game, combat would definitely be the most important. And all of the other systems are supporting of that. Now, you could make an argument that because economy is so important in strategy games, that that could be a, a core gameplay system. And you would be absolutely correct. Because if your economy is shit, then your combat is going to be shit because you can't produce the correct amount of troops. There we go. I hope that exercise helped to sort of visualize and understand what a core system and its subsystems might be. All right, everybody, let's play my favorite mini game. Name the core system. Woo! All right, can you tell me what the core system is for this popular game, Street Fighter II <laughs> Turbo HD Remix? Is it combat, navigation, economic, experience and leveling, camera conversation, points and scoring, none of these, or more than one? We all know it's combat. Of course it's combat. It's a fighting game. I hope everyone got that one correct. All right. In this popular adventure game, Myst, what would you say the core system is? Did you say navigation? Then you're probably correct. However, you could also make an argument that it's none of these because solving puzzles is a core gameplay system in Myst. However, you ha have to explore to get those puzzles going and therefore navigation is probably the best answer. Name the core system of Jeopardy. If you said conversation, you're kind of correct. It is trivia which is part of conversation. So that's a little bit of a trick one there. And you know, I'm, I'm providing the only correct answers are in the green boxes. So I, I know it's tricky, but uh, I, I'm just messing with you at this point. All right, tennis. This might be tough for some of you to figure out. That's right, it's combat, <laughs> which I know sounds ridiculous. It's a sport, no one dies, but it is actually a one versus one PVP situation and therefore would be considered a combat system. <laughs> all right, let's talk about gameplay loops. So a gameplay loop is all the things a player will do in your game for a particular course system. And let's do a little bit of a sample of a core system for combat. So the way that I typically approach a combat system is I, I either do a base 10 or a base 100 system. We're going to use a base 100. What does a base 100 mean? It means that generally speaking, I'm going to start with units that have 100 HP and I'm going to work the system around that 100 HP. And you're not locked into that because later on you can always scale it up or scale it down however you need based on, on what kind of game you're making. But it's important for the exercise to start with a base system that you can easily do the math on. So we're going to pick your core gameplay loop timing. So what is the timing of a combat round, which is an arbitrary term, term that we use to sort of say, when the player encounters a combat, we want combat to last for this long before it is over. And then they do something else, or there's a downtime, or they go on to the next set of enemies. Then in that this base 100 system, we will start with 100 HP for both the player and the enemy. And in this system, we will have a base damage output on, we, sorry, we will base damage output on the number of enemies and that loop time. This is how we will determine a, a round of combat or a combat encounter, depending upon what type of game you're making. So let's say that we're making a real-time uh, combat game and we want to have fights that last 40 seconds. We start with 100 HP, of course. And so we're going to have the player doing 20 damage per second, roughly. And that means that we want to have five to eight enemies per fight. So if you want to have multiple enemies that the player encounters, and we want 40 seconds for each combat encounter in this real-time game, then we're going to have five to eight enemies that they have to take down. Do you see the math on that? Well, let's, let's do another example. Uh, let's take... Uh, 
the Wraith from StarCraft. He has 150 50 hit points. He does 20 damage to air. That means that it takes about 8 seconds to take out a Wraith by another Wraith. It helps to have a calculator. I'm not good with math, so I always cheat. 20 times 8, 160, right? So it'll take you about 8 seconds to kill a Wraith with another Wraith. Uh, let's, let's go back to this example. Let, let's just do the math on that. So let's say that um, you have 5 enemies. Each one has 100 hit points. That's 500 hit points divided by, you're doing 20 damage per second. That's 25 seconds. Let's say you have <clears throat> eight enemies times 100 HP. Now you have 800 hit points you have to get through divided by the 20 damage per second. That's a 40 second fight. There you go. Does that make sense? I hope so. And you would create an Excel spreadsheet and this would basically roughly determine how these combats would go. We did the Wraith. What about an orc? So if you have two orcs fighting, how long does it take for each orc to kill each other? So they have rough damage because there's random a random factor in uh, Warcraft 3. So we'll, we'll take the average. So it's 19.5, right? They have 700 hit points. Therefore, divide 700 by 19.5. Roughly 35, 36 second combat between two orc grunts. Which is interesting, right? But yeah, that's that's how you start to find your numbers in a base 100 system to figure out your combat system. So I hope that's useful. And uh, if not, feel free to come to my Discord and <laughs> ask me questions about it. So this is sort of a definitive statement. I don't like speaking in absolutes. I'm not a Sith. But uh, the gameplay loop is the heartbeat of your game. If you can't hear the heartbeat, your game is dead. So let us do some core gameplay loop examples to see if you can sort of see what I'm talking about when I talk about the core gameplay loop. And the reason that the core gameplay loop is so important is because it's the first expression of what your game is supposed to be. And in any design document, the core gameplay loop is almost always the second thing that you're putting into the document to express the game to others. The first being a one paragraph description of generally the vision of the game. This core gameplay loop starts with defeating enemies. So we've got a combat system. To get loot and XP, so we've got a XP and we've got some sort of economy system. To improve your hero, there's our leveling system, which was implied by the XP. So what game am I describing here with this core gameplay loop? Defeat enemies, get loot and XP, improve your hero. If you said The Witcher 3, correct. If you said Elder Scrolls Skyrim, correct. Or any Elder Scrolls game, really. If you said Diablo, correct. If you said World of Warcraft, correct. If you said Dead Cells, correct. If you said Destiny, correct. All of these games have that core gameplay loop. You defeat enemies to get loot and XP, to improve your hero so you can defeat more enemies, so you can get loot and XP, so you can improve your hero, and so on and so forth into infinity. That is a core gameplay loop, and that is how you know it's a core gameplay loop because it's so obvious when I show you that. Let's do uh, one more example. Also, these are this is not the limit of all the games. There's thousands of games that fall under this core gameplay loop. So uh, here's another example. Gather resources to build stuff that lets you upgrade so you can gather more resources to build stuff that lets you upgrade so you can gather more. You get it? What are you thinking of? Did you say SimCity? Congrats. Did you say Stardew Valley? Congrats. Did you say Minecraft? Congrats. All of these games and thousands more follow that core gameplay loop which is a economic one. Don't get too caught up when you're making your game in trying to be different from everything that's out there. Because I assure you that everything that's out there falls under these simple categories, these simple core gameplay loops. And it's simply the method of expression and the specific ways that they create these systems that are the differences. So don't worry about your game seeming like every other game when you're talking about it in its most basic form. That is important, actually, because you need to be able to express what your game is to other people. And you might feel that that's an oversimplification of your grand idea and whatever, but it really doesn't matter. Get over your ego. <laughs> it's really important that people be able to understand what your game is about. And that means simplifying, not overly explaining.
All right, questions and answers. Uh, feel free to come to my Discord and ask me any questions you like about this lesson. Today's topics that we covered in lesson three were the core gameplay system, subsystems, identifying core gameplay, and the gameplay loop. So if you have any questions about these things or anything I didn't mention here, you know, we didn't really go into subsystems very well. That I think I think I cover that in four or five. But either way, uh, if you have any questions about these things, let me know. Homework. As always, continue working on your game or start a new game. I mean, at this point, I think there's so much time in between these lessons that uh, you might have moved on to something else. That's okay. Uh, but write down your core gameplay system or systems. Identify the subsystems that are supportive or tension creating. Determine your core gameplay loop. Write a paragraph describing your core gameplay loop. This is where you can show how you're a little bit different from the, the very basics of it. And then adjust your systems and mechanics to support it. Make sure that you show the connection to your core gameplay loop. Make sure that all mechanics and subsystems you created support the core gameplay loop. Note any that do not, and if they create tension or not. Remove the ones that don't support or create tension. This is important. This is where, this is where the editing of design comes in, and you have to be very careful about what you think is important versus what actually is. And then create additional mechanics for your subsystems with support or tension in mind. Because during the editing phase, most people will have cut a lot of subsystems that they thought were important. And now you can sort of think about the way you can create mechanics and systems that support your core gameplay system and have support or tension uh, being created by them. Please like and subscribe, and you can support me on Patreon if you'd like to see more content like this. Uh, on Patreon, uh, you have more direct access to me, um, but really the best access is always on my Discord. Because uh, you can literally just ask me questions. I'm basically there every day. Uh, so if I don't see you later, good afternoon, good evening, and good night.